I want to show I can be a splendid ninja as well. Even if I do not have ninjutsu or genjutsu. I want to prove it to the whole world. What? What is so funny? You think I am joking? I mean it. Anytime I ask someone who the favorite Naruto character is, I get a variety of responses. From Sasuke to Kakashi, Sakura and sometimes even Naruto himself. But not enough time people pick Rock Lee and that's a bit bothering me. Yet I can understand since he was at times used just as a background character. What I want to do today is explain why I personally think Rock Lee is the best Naruto character ever created. Before that, if you are new to this channel, click on the subscribe button not to miss any of the new content and click on that like button if you like this. Anyway, enough talk, let's rock! No pun intended. Before all the overly complicated power sets and all the Keke Genkai bullshit, we had the Naruto series. A series that was mostly focused on characters and how the story affected those characters and that one character who had not just the best arc but also the most relatable one was Rock Lee. I want to break it into three parts to illustrate my points on how Masashi Kishimoto with only one character was able to touch my soul and actually teach me something about life. Number one, his goal is arc. If you watch Rock Lee's fight with Gara during the tuning exam, you pretty much get the whole idea behind the character's goal. Lee was considered inferior because he didn't possess any ninjutsu or genjutsu. Dude, there's no way a kid who can't even do ninjutsu can ever be a ninja. The point of his fight with Gara was to prove that despite only being able to practice taijutsu, which is basically just kung fu, he could still beat the strongest ninjas by hard work and sheer willpower. Good eye! Now I will prove my point that hard work beats out natural talent. <laughs> and that's the thing. In Naruto, there was always two sides of things represented by Naruto and Sasuke. Sasuke was the hard worker with a goal, loved by everyone because he was special, but due to his dark past, was often seduced by his dark side. That's his story. As for Naruto, he was despised and mocked by others because he was considered stupid and not good enough. But plot twist, he is special. But with Rock Lee, it's completely different. He is noble. He doesn't have a dark side. He is mocked for not being good enough. But there is no twist. He has got nothing special in him. The only thing special about him is his determination and hard work. 1,200 without a mistake, then it is 2,000 kicks, 1,170, 1,180. After his fight with Gara, he was supposed to be done. It was supposed to be the conclusion of his arc, right? Wrong. What would have been the message if the person with this much determination and willpower lost his ability to fight forever? No, his arc comes full circle when his attitude helps him recover despite Tsunade and others telling him it was over. Anyone else would have given up given the circumstances, but not him, not Rock Lee. I live by my own rules. Number one is to never forget your goal. I must work to be the best ninja I could be. Number two, Kai Sensei. Giving Rock Lee a father figure he could look up to was a genius move. Lee and Mac Guy had something in common, except their haircuts and eyebrows of course. They both were considered inferior in their younger age because they could only do taijutsu and both were labeled losers. See, I was a loser too once. What? You were a loser? Oh yes indeed. Yet, they both have been able to overcome what was considered a weakness to become two of the greatest shinobi the Leaf Village has ever produced. The thing is, without Guy Sensei, Rock Lee's character would not be as deep. And Guy Sensei's character is interesting because of how it deepens the character of Rock Lee. I mean, we had to wait until Naruto shipped them to see my guy in action. Yet, we cared about him way before that because of Lee. Rock Lee had no family in the series as far as I can tell, and honestly he didn't need to. What Rock Lee needed the most for his character to feel complete was a mentor and a father figure. Someone who would believe in him when no one else would. 
and fear for him anytime he's in danger. In that way, when Lee finds himself in arm's way, we fear for him, not just because he's likable, but also because you don't want my guy, who is established to be a great guy and a father figure, to lose a son. He's my student, and also because he is precious to me. And that adds so much to the character of Rock Lee. That was also one of my biggest issues with Naruto himself in his early days as he lacked that kind of attachment with someone. Thankfully, they fixed it later when they brought on Jiraiya and as a result, Jiraiya's death had weight because we kept thinking about how Naruto would feel when he learns about it. But let's not forget Rock Lee and my guy did it first and they did it beautifully. We... You've already proven it. Number 3. What it represents In an interview, Naruto creator Masashi Kishimoto declared that Sakura and Rock Lee were the human connection between the audience and the series, stating, and I quote, Well, Lee only has Daijutsu and as a girl, Sakura is physically weaker than others, so I can see why it's easy to empathize with them. They represent human weaknesses. This tells you everything you need to know about Lee. He was based on Bruce Lee himself, but without the popularity and sex appeal. Rock Lee represents the losers. Those who never felt special around the most intelligent people at school. Those who feel like they are not good enough to succeed in life. I know the character touched me personally because I could relate to his struggle and probably so could many people. How many times have you doubted yourself? How many times have you thought you were not good enough? Well, Rock Lee was there to tell you that setting goals for yourself and working hard to attain those goals will not only improve you as a person, but will allow you to be the best version of yourself. Lee never became Okage. He never became the strongest shinobi. He was actually ignored most of the time in Shippuden. And while I don't like it personally, I can understand that the direction Kishimoto wanted to go, with all the Kaguya and all the alien bullshit, Rock Lee was just not up for the task. But you know what? It's perfectly okay. He still did his part, he became a strong shinobi, helped his village during the dark times, and survived the great ninja war against all odds while fighting some of the strongest shinobi there is. The point of Rock Lee's character was not that he would become the shinobi who defeats everyone. The point he was trying to prove was that he would not be a failure and that despite his disadvantage, he would be counted amongst the greatest shinobi of the Leaf Village. With hard work and dedication, he won the respect of the entire village and his comrades. And this is why Rock Lee is the best Naruto character. Hey guys, I don't know if you have noticed the little intro at the beginning of the video. The intro is about this new little section in this channel called Critically Rock, named after my favorite anime character of all time, Rock Lee. Who would have guessed? And in this section, I will be talking about anime. I would be dropping episodes from time to time. This was the second episode of Critically Rock. You can check out the one I made about Saitama from One Punch Man. And if you like anime and you like this video, you should consider subscribing. I've got more interesting videos coming soon, so stay tuned. As for me, I'll see you around. Bye bye.